Hi everyone, in today's tutorial we will explore the creation of stunning northern hexagonal cliffs using Blender powerful geometry nodes. This useful system will not only enhance your current project, but also serve as a useful asset for the future ones. The customization possibilities are vast, allowing you to tailor the rocks to your specific needs, all thanks to the procedural approach. So without further ado, let's jump into a new blend file and start making our project. Our system will be controlled by two objects. Based on them we will create base plane geometry and then we will extrude it. After that we will remesh half cliff and we will add additional details using noises and displacement. We will need two objects to control the formation of our cliffs. The first is the base object which will be the XY shape, while the second, the controller, will manipulate the height and the shape in the Z axis of our structure. Let's proceed by crafting these two objects. We will start with planes and introduce some edits to shape them to our needs. Next, let's create geometry node system for our base plane. Within the geometry nodes, our goal is to segment our base shape into Voronoi-like cells. So to start, we will generate distribute points across the base geometry. The density parameter here is crucial, as it will determine the final density of our cliff elements. Next, we will instantiate some curve lines on these points using the curve line and instance on point nodes. At this stage, the z-axis height is irrelevant, we will solve the interest in the x-y coordinates of each curve. I will explain why in a moment. Once we've placed our instances, it's time to realize instances node. This node allows us to edit each geometry piece individually. Following that, we need the outline of our base shape in curve form which we can achieve with the mesh to curve node. However, this gives us both the outline and internal edges, but we only want the outline of it. To remove the unwanted edges, we will use the delete geometry node. Now we need to create selection using a field system with the edge neighbors node. We need to delete those edges that have face count greater than one. So for that, let's use greater than node. After setting up the delete node to remove edges, we are left with the perfect outline. We will then create a joint geometry node to merge the outline with our curve lines. Next, we will use the fill curve node, which connects everything, creating a nice irregular triangle pattern. The mesh only is generated flat with a local Z of zero. So that is why the height of curve lines doesn't really matter. Finally, to morph our triangles into form more like Voronoi cells, we will utilize the dual mesh node. This transforms each vertex into a face and vice versa, giving us the desired effect. There is a small issue with the cells around the edge of our mesh. They are too stretched out. This happens because we don't have enough points on the edges of our outline. We can fix this by adding resample curve node before the joint geometry node, here. This will give us extra points and make the cells look even all over. Let's create some geometry along the z-axis now. For that we need our control object. Pin the geometry node tree and drag and drop our controller object from the outliner. Set up object info to relative. We will use it in a moment to control the height of our extrusion. Create an extrude mesh node and plug it after this. Now everything is extruded by the same amount. To use our controller, let's add a Raycast node. Change the ray direction to the positive Z axis and plug the heat distance into the offset scale. Now we can edit our controller at geometry and it will affect our geometry node system. What is happening is the Raycast node should raise from our base geometry in the upward direction. Then it checks the distance between the base and the heat surface of the control object. We use that value for the extrusion. We need to close our geometry from the bottom. So let's add a join node and connect our extrude mesh with our original geometry before extrusion. If we check the normals now, as you can see, we have some red areas. To fix it, Let's add a flip face node before the join node. Finally, add a merge by distance node after the join node to connect it to a single mesh. 
The one thing that I don't like now is the flat area here. We could add some randomization to our shape. For that, let's add a set position node before joining and use the top output as our selection. Thanks to that, we can edit our height using fields. Let's use random value node and combine XYZ to create a random offset in the Z axis. As you can see, we have a problem. The tops of the rocks are not flat anymore. We need to group our vertices with ID input in a random value, so every vertex that is part of the same face has the same random value. To fix that, we will need to use a mesh island node, but there is one problem. Each rock pillar is a part of the whole. There are no separate meshes. To use island index, we need to separate each Voronoi cell, and to do that, we need to use a split edges node just before our extrusion. Thanks to that, if I now plug the island index as ID to the random value node, we have nice variations in the z-axis and everything remains flat. So we created basic geometry, now I want to add extra details. Let's fuse everything together by remeshing it. To remesh inside geometry node, first we need to convert our mesh to volume with the mesh to volume node. After that just add the volume to mesh node and you can now adjust the resolution inside the mesh to volume node but don't set it to hide because Blender might become slow or even crash. After a moment we've converted everything to a single geometry. It looks quite nice but there are a few problems. First I don't like these vertical lines all over my geometry and second I think the edges are now too smooth. So let's fix both issues at once. I want to reproject our geometry to the original low poly object. We can do this with a set position node. Let's create it and uh, place it after volume to mesh. To reproject our mesh I will use a geometry proximity node, set on faces. Let's plug the geometry from before remeshing into it. And now we need to mix between the geometry proximity position and the original position. Let's add a mix node and plug it into set position node. Now we can control the intensity of this effect. It looks much better already. So we have a pretty decent effect already, but I would like to add one more layer of details. We will use some displacement to add texture to our rocks. Before that, add a shade smooth node to better preview the results. Then, let's create a set position node and uh, we want to change our position along the normal direction, so let's add a normal node. We need to scale it, so let's drag from it a vector math scale node. As the scale, we will use the noise texture. By default, the noise texture has a range that goes from 0 to 1, like black and white values. But I would like to move geometry both in and out. So to fix this problem, I will use a map range node to remap our texture from 0 to 1 to minus half to plus half. Let's plug it into our scale node. And as you can see, the effect is much too strong. Let's duplicate the scale node and plug it here. Now we have total control over strength of our displacement. We can play with settings, but I want the first layer of this effect to be really tiny. For the bigger distortions, we'll use another displacement. Let's duplicate the entire set position part and plug it right after. Let's play with texture setting and displacement strength to adjust the new parameters. I want to create a bigger noise pattern. Ok, I think that uh, now everything is a little bit too noisy. To fix that, I will try to reproject uh, to our original low poly geometry. But uh, this time, I want to reproject only parts of our mesh based on the noise texture. For that, I will create one more set position node and plug it here at the end. We need to mix between the original position and the current one, so let's add a mix vector math node and connect it to a position node and the output from the geometry proximity from here.
Now we need to mix between these two values based on the noise texture. So let's create one and plug it in. We can increase the contrast a lot by using a color ramp here. Let's adjust the contrast. We can also play with the noise texture scale too. At the end, we can add some materials with a set material node. Okay, so after playing with the control shape and scales of our displacements, these are my final results. As you can see, with geometry nodes, we can create nice rocks pretty easily. To speed up things after creation, you can always convert geometry node smash to real geometry if you don't want to edit the setup further. Then, for example, you can go to sculpt mode and add additional details. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something new, and if you want to support my channel you can check out my Blender add-ons and asset packs, the link in the description. And also if you want to download the final file from this tutorial, the link is also in the description. Thanks again for watching, and bye!